Good evening, happy Sabbath. It's good to be in Romania. My name is Joshua White. I come from America, the state Michigan. So we understand cold weather just like you do here in Romania. I direct a ministry called the Thinking Generation. I'm an educator and a researcher in the field of early childhood development and education. And it's the purpose of this ministry to help families and schools and teachers understand how children learn, how they develop. Și este scopul misiunii noastre să ajutăm profesori, părinți și educatori să se ocupe de copii din, din gradul mai mic al vârstei. But there's an important reason why we do this. Și este, avem motive serioase pentru care ne ocupăm de așa ceva. How many here believe Jesus is coming soon? Câți dintre dumneavoastră credeți că Domnul vine curând? Ah, good. Foarte bine, mă bucur. But how many of you believe that we have a job to do to enable Jesus to come soon? Yeah. Well, sometimes we get excited about Jesus coming, but we forget that he's given us a work to do to enable him to come. And that is the, the work of spreading the gospel. Și aceasta este lucrarea de predicare a Evangheliei. And that is why we are focused on the early education of children, because it is in the earliest years that the, that the foundation of character is laid. Și de aceea ne ocupăm de educarea copiilor, pentru că știm faptul că caracterul se plădește în primii ani de viață. And this evening we're going to look at that very important topic. Și seara aceasta o să ne uităm, să ne ocupăm de acest subiect important. I'd like us to open our Bibles to the book of Malachi. Și o să vă invit să deschidem Biblia în cartea lui Maleachi. We're going to look at the last two verses in the Old Testament. Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. Și o să citim ultimele două versete ale Vechiului Testament. Before we read God's word, can we pray one more time? Let's bow our heads. Our Father, we come to you this evening seeking your truth. Tată ce răsc venim în aici atat la această seară, căutând adevărul tău. We seek to know your way. Sper să cunoaștem căile tale. But Lord, we cannot understand that truth without the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Tată, știm că nu putem înțelege acest adevăr fără conducerea de Bunii Sfânt. Please, Lord, send your Spirit to us this evening in a mighty and powerful way. Te rugăm, Tată, să dai Bunul Sfânt în această seară asupra noastră în maniere foarte puternică și clară. Please open our minds, Lord, so that we can better understand your truth in a way that applies to us individually. I ask, Lord, that you speak through me. May I only share your words this evening. And I ask in Jesus' name, Amen. Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. Behold, this is a prophecy. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Iată, aceasta înseamnă că urmează o profeție. Vă voi trimite pe prorocul Ilie. Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Înainte de a veni ziua Domnului, ziua aceea mare și înfricoșată. So this is a prophecy about Elijah. Deci aceasta este o profeție despre Elie. Now is this the same Elijah that we read about back in the book of Kings? 
este acesta același idee care, care ne vorbește de cartea împăraților? No, it couldn't be. That wouldn't be prophecy. That would be history. <laughs> this is looking forward to a date when there would be someone who would do the work of Elijah. And it was before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, is this speaking of the first coming of Jesus or the second coming of Jesus? Which one? Both. Both. We have a good student here. <laughs> it is. We know it's speaking of both because if we turn to Luke, we find the, these, the same wording used to describe John the Baptist. And he was to do a work to prepare people for the coming of the Lord. But we also know this is speaking of the second coming of Jesus because it calls it the great and dreadful day. And no one calls the first coming of Jesus the great and dreadful day. So, there was a work to do to prepare people for the great and dreadful day of the Lord. What was that work? Well, let's read verse 6. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So what was the work to prepare people for the coming of the Lord? It was the turning of the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the children to the fathers. It was a work of restoring the family. And let's read just one more verse here in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 17. We see here the similar wording to what we just read in Malachi. Speaking of John the Baptist, it says, He shall go before him, before Jesus, in the spirit and power of Elijah. And he would turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. So this was the same work, this, this was a, a restoration of the family described in this verse. But what was the purpose? What was the purpose of restoring the family? We read here, to make ready a people prepared. For the Lord. At this period in earth's history, do we need a people prepared for the coming of the Lord? We must. Jesus is coming soon. We need to prepare people. And how are we to do that? No, we just read it was to restore the family. The work to restore the family is the work that will prepare people for the last days. In fact, we read in the Reunion Herald that just such a work as that of John is to be carried on in the last days. Ca o lucrare, ca cea a lui Ioan, trebuie să fie făcută în timpul din urmă. 
But I would like to ask, why? The Lord could have chosen many different works to prepare people for His coming. Domnul a putut să aleagă multe diferite lucrări pentru a pregăti poporul său pentru venirea sa. Why do we read in Malachi and in Luke that the work to prepare people for his coming was to restore the family? Why didn't he choose some other work? De ce citim în Malachi și în Luca că lucrarea de restaurare a familiilor este pregătirea pentru venirea Domnului? De ce nu este altă lucrare de făcut? Că mai sunt și alte de făcut importante. Any ideas? Aveți vreo idee? Why was it the family? Why not something else? De ce familia accepta atenție și nu altceva? Because the family is the most perfect it's the center of that in our days. Yes, yes, yes. Any others? I'll take a look. Family doesn't appreciate. Dumnezeu poate să vorbească prin trei lucruri sau trei metode. Prin natură, prin scriptură și prin cele mai viață legături omenești, ca prin familia. He says God speaks to two ways, nature, scripture, and the We have some good answers. And they're all true. But there's another one. Ellen White tells us that the greatest evidence for the power of Christianity that can be presented to the world divinității poate să o prezinte, nu, puterea creștinismului poate să o prezinte în lumii. The greatest. The greatest evidence for the power of Christianity. Cea mai mare evidență, cea mai mare dovadă pentru puterea creștinismului în lume. What is it? Care este? Familia bine organizată. It's a well-ordered, well-disciplined family. Este o familie bine organizată și bine disciplinată. This will recommend the truth like nothing else, for it is a living witness of its practical power upon the heart. Aceasta va recomanda. This will. Aceasta va recomanda adevărul ca nimic altceva, pentru că este o mărturie vie despre puterea practică asupra inimii credinței. Is this perhaps why the Lord has chosen? The restoration of the family to restore people for her, to prepare people for his coming. Poate fi și acesta motivul pentru care Domnul a ales ca restaurarea, restaurarea familiei să fie modul în care ne pregătim pentru venirea Domnului. Because the work that we need to do to prepare for his coming is to spread the gospel. Pentru că lucrarea pe care trebuie să facem predicând Evanghelia. And the greatest evidence for the power of Christianity is a well-ordered family. Și puterea Evangheliei este exemplul unei familii bine organizate. Therefore, that strong family is the greatest tool we have for the spread of the gospel. De aceea, familia bine pusă la punct este cea mai mare unealtă pe care o avem pentru răspândirea Evangheliei. So, if the strong family is our greatest tool, deci dacă o familie puternică este cea mai puternică unealtă pentru Would it stand to reason that the family would be the object of Satan's greatest attack in the last days? Care ar fi motivul pentru care familia ar fi centrul atacului satanei în ultima generație? Oh, we don't have to imagine this. We can see it around us. Nu trebuie să ne mai imaginăm nimic. Vedem în jurul nostru. Right now, 75% of our young people are leaving the church. La ora aceasta, 75% dintre tinerii au venit. 
The door, divorce rate is nearly the same inside as outside the church. We see Satan's attacks on the family everywhere we look, even inside our church. We were told, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. This is not a spiritual gift. It's not optional whether we witness or not. It's a command from our Lord. When we are Christians, we are witnesses. And we read in the spirit of prophecy that the influence of a well-ordered, well-disciplined family is far greater for good than is the influence of powerful servants from the pulpit. Și citim în Spiritul Profetic că influența unei familii bine organizate și disciplinate este mult mai mare decât influența unei predici de la Amor. Suppose I wanted you to do a job for me. I don't know, maybe fix my car. Să presupunem că vreau să faceți un servicu, să zicem că vreau să-mi reparați mașină. So, I handed you a toolbox. Așa că îți dau o trusă bine de sculă. And I said, in this toolbox, you'll find everything you need to complete the job that I've asked you to do. So you take the toolbox and you, you open it and you start looking inside. And you look in the top, there are some small tools. And they're all, they have little labels on them to tell you whether it's an important tool or what you need it for. And then you, you, you take that tray off, you look in the next layer, and there's some bigger tools in there. And you work your way through this toolbox until you get to the bottom of it. And at the bottom you find this really big tool. And it says on it, you'll need this tool for every part of the job. Your most important tool. Now, at that point, you just close the lid and say, oh, that tool must not be important. I won't bother with that one. And so you can discover No, you'd be crazy. <laughs> you, what you need to do is figure out how you're going to use this tool because it just said it's the most important tool. So it's kind of like that. The Lord has given us a job to do in spreading the gospel. And we say, or so he hands us a toolbox. And it's, this toolbox is full of witnessing tools. So we love it we find some tools that are, says, maybe, your church pastor. Your elders. And then you, you take the next layer off and you find 3 a.m. Or Doug Baxler. So, Mark Finley. <laughs> These are really big tools for the spread of the gospel. But then uh, you get down to the bottom of this toolbox and you find a really big tool. And it says, your family. That's what the Lord has given us. In all the tools we have for the spread of the gospel, the witness of our families is the greatest that exists. So this leads us to another question. Where are we focusing our attention? If we are going to believe that the family is our greatest tool for spreading the gospel, 
faptul că familiile sunt cel mai important lucru prin care putem predica Evanghelia. We're going to want to do everything we can to strengthen that witness and focus on it. Trebuie să facem tot ce putem să întărim această mărturie prin familii și să ne concentrăm asupra ei. Doug Baxter might be important, but he can't preach the same sermon that our family can preach. Doug Baxter poate fi important, dar nu poate predica ceea ce familiile noastre trebuie să predice. Aceea predică ca și familia mea. So, this evening, I'd like to briefly go over five ways in which we can strengthen our family witness. În această seară aș vrea să trec peste cinci puncte prin care familia noastră poate să fie întărită în mărturisirea ei asupra credinței. The first one we can do is to focus on the early years of childhood. Primul punct ar fi să ne concentrăm asupra primilor ani ai copilării. Now let's contrast this though with the way the world does it versus the way the Lord wants us to do it. Și să punem lucrurile în contrast cum pretinde lumea că ar trebui făcute lucrurile și cum ne cere Domnul. The reality is the world has a lot of focus on the early years. Adevărul este că lumea are multe de spus se concentrează la anii timpului ai copilării. But it has a wrong focus. Dar are concentrarea greșită asupra anilor timpului. We are neglecting the focus on what is most important in the early years. Greșim concentrarea asupra ceea ce este important în anii timpului. You know, brain science tells us that spirituality. Știința despre creier ne spune că lucrurile spirituale, the understanding of relationships, înțelegerea relațiilor, emotional security, siguranța emoțională, behavior management, să-ți controlezi comportamentul, controlul comportamentului, language skills, abilități legate de limbă, de exprimare, good memory skills, abilități legate de memorie, moral understanding, înțelegere morală, conscience, conștiință, and character development, dezvoltarea caracterului. Now, is this an important list that I just went through? Este o listă importantă ce v-am citit? Do we want children deficient in any of the things I just named? Ați vrea să aveți copii deficienți în un aspect pe care l-am... No, we want to strengthen each one of these areas. Am vrea să le întărim în toate aceste aspecte. So what's significant about the list I just gave? Deci ce este important din această, ce este semnificativ din această listă? Brain science tells us that the foundation for each one of those is laid in the first seven years of the child's life. Știința care studiază mintea și creierul ne spune că fundamentul la fiecare din aceste aspecte în viața de mai târziu a omului este bazată pe experiența primilor șapte ani de viață. In fact, the uh, recent study was published in the Journal of Child Development and told us that a child's conscience emerges in the first three years of a child's life. The foundation. The study was published in the Journal of Child Development in which it shows very clearly that the development of conscience of a child is based on the experience of the first three years of life. That's what secular science tells us. Aceasta ne spune știința lumească. You think that might agree with the spirit of prophecy? Credeți că s-ar putea să corespundă cu spiritul profetic? Indeed. We read that the lessons learned and the habits formed during the years of infancy and childhood Ni se spune de Sora White că textele învățate în anii prunciei și copilăriei mici have more to do with the formation of character and the direction of life than have all the instruction and training of after years. Au de a face mai mult cu have more to do with cu formarea caracterului și direcția pe care viața va avea mai târziu decât toate instrucțiunile și pregătirea din anii de mai târziu. There's a saying that says give me a child until he is seven and he will be mine un proverb care ne spune că dăm copilul până la vârsta de șapte ani și o să fie al meu pentru totdeauna. Does anyone know who said those words? Știți cine a spus aceste cuvinte? Cumva? Iată vreți. Yeah? It was a Jesuit saying, actually. Exact. A fost un Jesuit care a spus aceste cuvinte. The order of Jesuits was founded to counteract the work of the Reformation. Ordinul Jesuit a fost 
fost format ca să contracareze lucrarea reformațiunii. And it started out that every Jesuit had to be a teacher. Și a început prin faptul că fiecare Jesuit era un profesor. They knew that the best way to counteract the work of the Reformation was to teach the young children. Ei au observat faptul că cea mai bine, cea mai bună cale de a opri reformațiunea este să învețe pe copii mici. And they said, if we have them until they're seven, they'll be ours forever. Și au spus că dacă îi pot învăța, dacă îi pot educa înainte de vârsta de șapte ani, vor fi ai doar pentru totdeauna. They know it. They capitalize on it. We do. Ei înțeleg secretul și îl folosesc. Înțelegem și noi aceste lucruri? A second thing we can do to strengthen our families is to limit our media usage. Un al doilea lucru pe care îl putem face pentru a întări anii copilăriei este să limităm folosința mijloacelor media. You know, right now, the current average in the U.S. Uh, is about 12 hours per day spent in media for a young person. Media, în Statele Unite, la ora aceasta, este de aproximativ 12 ore pe zi folosită de un copil în fața mijloacelor mass media. Now, here in Romania, it's less than that. I believe it's uh, roughly four, I'm trying to remember the last statistic, somewhere around four hours a day. În România, statisticile sunt ceva de bune, sunt în jur de patru ore în fiecare zi în medie. But either way, it's a lot more than it used to be. Dar cu toate acestea este mult mai mult decât a fost înainte, în anii din trecut. And yet the research shows that it's starving children of essential brain development. Starving them of brain development. Și cercetările arată că seapă copiii It's causing attention deficit disorders. Creates a deficiency of attention. Linked to reading and listening problems. Care este legată de probleme de citit și de auzit de ascultare. It's causing eye and brain damage. Și creează probleme de ochi și de eye and brain. Probleme de ochi și probleme la creier. And the research is telling us that we need to be keeping it at a minimum or even eliminating it up until the age of 12. And so as the world just continues to take on as whatever entertainment comes their way in the form of media, în termenii mijloacelor media. We can say, no, we're going to work against that. We're going to strengthen our families by not allowing media to separate us. Noi am putea spune, nu noi o să ne luptăm împotriva acestor mijloace, dar prin legăturile de familie care trebuie întărite și nu vrem să acceptăm acest val de mass media. There's a little story that goes, Dear Mom on the iPhone. Dear Mom. Dear Mom on the iPhone. Este o mică povestire care se numește uh, iubită mamă pe iPhone. I see you over there on the bench on your iPhone. Te văd, mamă, acolo pe bancă cu iPhone. Now it feels good to relax while your kid, children have fun in the sunshine, doesn't it? E, te simți bine să te relaxezi în timp ce copiii se joacă la soare. You're doing a great job with your kids. Face treabă bună cu copiii tăi. But mama, let me just tell you something you don't see right now. Your little girl is over there spinning and making her dress twirl. She's wondering if you're watching her. But your eyes are on your phone. Your little boy keeps calling, Mom, watch this! Băiatul tău strigă, Mama, uite-te la mine! I see you barely acknowledge him. Dar tu te vezi aici ochii să observi pe exista. Now you're pushing the baby in the swing. Și văd că merge în copilul pe chintă, pe leagă. You don't see her, though, do you? You don't see her. Dar nu o vezi pe ea. You're watching your phone as you 
have some time to push your swing. There's a the phone teacher legend that talk to her, mommy. Or wish that. Tell her about the clouds. Spune mama. Copilului. Despre noi. About the creator who made them. Despre creatorul care a făcut. Tickle her tummy when she comes near you and enjoy that baby belly laugh that leaves far too quickly. Put your eyes back on your prize, your kids, not your phone. Show them that they are the priority. If you're there with them, be all there. Because their childhood will be over before you know it. There will come a point when they stop trying to interrupt you. Stop calling for you to watch them. Stop bothering to interrupt your phone time. I know it's not true, Mommy. I know your heart is really with your kids. But your kids can't hear your words. Because your actions are speaking too loudly. Our third point out of five. We need to make character our primary focus. Make character our primary focus. Because the world says grades and academic success, succeeding in a career, that's the most important focus. That's what the world considers success. But is that what God considers success? Aceasta este ceea ce lumea consideră succes, dar este și pentru Dumnezeu, la fel de consider aceste lucruri succes. Have you ever taken a long journey somewhere? Ați mers pe dată într-o călătorie lungă? Yeah, some of us, maybe. Unii dintre noi, sigur. So, as you're, as you're packing, you're getting ready as a family, and as you're packing the car, în timp ce îți pregătești mașina cu familia și îți spune cum e mașina, can everybody bring everything they want? Poate fiecare își aducă tot ceea ce vrea? No, you have to kind of limit it, right? Trebuie să le limitezi. Uh, here's two suitcases, kids. If you if it fits in here, you can bring it. Otherwise, it has to stay home. And you know the importance of what you're packing in the car depends on your destination. Suppose you're going on another journey, though, and you're going to fly. Să presupunem însă că mergi pe o altă călătorie în care o să zbor cu avionul. And you're on one of these cheap airlines that only allows you to bring one little suitcase. Și ești la o linie aliană ieftină care îți dă voie să iei numai o singură valiză mică. Does the importance of what you're putting in that suitcase go up a little bit? Crește importanța lucrurilor pe care le pui în valiza cea mică. You're going to think a little more. Încerc să te gândești pe mai bine. Do I really need what I'm putting in here? And when you make the decision about what to bring, it's going to be something that you need at your destination, but you maybe can't even get at your destination, but you need it for your destination. Suppose you're going on another journey. To China. And you're going for an entire year. The only thing is that with this journey you can only bring one item with you. Just one. For a whole year. Now, would you just go walking out the door, grab some random thing beside the door, and just head off to China? <laughs> You'd probably lose sleep over your decision. As you analyze, well, what do I need when I get to China? Ce am nevoie de China? 
And probably when you made the decision, you would bring something that you needed in China, but maybe you couldn't get in China. Probably you would bring something that you needed in China, but maybe you couldn't get in China. Probably when you made the decision, you would bring something that you needed in China, but maybe you couldn't get in China. Probably when you made the decision, you would bring something that you needed in China, but maybe you couldn't get in China. Probably when you made the decision, you would bring something that you needed in China, but maybe you couldn't get in China. A journey toward heaven. I hope we're all on that journey. And how many things can we bring with us? Just one. Single loop. Just one. 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 Is the only thing, the only treasure that we can take from this world. We can take from this world to the next. We can take from this world to the next. We can take from this world to the next. We can take from this world to the next. We can take from this world to the next. We can take from this world to the next. We can take from this world to the next. We can take from this world to the next. We can take from this world to the next. We can take from this world to the next. A patra metodă prin care putem întări mărturia familiilor noastre is for parents to recognize and accept that parenting is their primary job. Este să admitem și să recunoaștem faptul că a fi părinte este unul dintre lucrurile cele mai importante în viață, datoria cea mai mare. The Christian research groups have done studies on successful Christian parents. Societățile de studii creștine au făcut studii legate de părinții creștini. And they found that successful Christian parents saw parenting as their top job. All the jobs were secondary to their job as a parent. Și au descoperit că părinții creștini care au succes cu copiii lor au considerat a fi părinte cel mai important lucru din viață, cea mai mare, cea mai importantă datorie și toate celelalte sunt mai de urmă, sunt secundare. They also didn't leave the discipling of their children to the church or the school. They, they, they saw that as their job. And they also accepted from the very start that they were going to be different from the world. That's what the research shows. And the spirit of prophecy tells us that there's no more important field of effort than that committed to parents. She spoke to prophetic as to let her know that she said the only more important the activity that the church is doing is the parenting. Our fifth way in which we can strengthen our family witness. Now I know this is not a politically correct thing to say. Știu că acest lucru nu este un lucru pe care îl putem spune cu corectitudine politică. I don't mean to offend anyone. Nu vreau să jignesc pe nimeni. But I'm going on what the research and the spirit of prophecy says. Dar mă bazez pe cercetare și pe ce spune spiritul profetic din nou. And that is stay at home, moms. Și acesta este stai acasă, mami. If we look at the secular research, it tells us that Families with a stay-at-home mom typically raise a more successful child. That a worldly success standpoint. Christian research has told us that Those families with a stay-at-home mom have a higher percentage of spiritually strong young adults. Cercetările educației creștine, familiilor creștine ne spun că familiile care nu mică a stat acasă vor avea copii cu o rată spirituală, cu o creștere spirituală de calitate mult mai bună decât cei care nu au fost mică acasă. You know, they've done studies on infants. Au studiat pute lușii They did one study with infant rats. They separated them from their mothers for 24 hours. The rate of brain cell die-off doubled with just 24 hours. 
doar în aceste 24 de ore de separare față de Literally, separating the infant from their mother was killing their brains. They did, they did other studies on infant monkeys and found physical changes, destruction within their brain to important regions like the hypothalamus and hippocampus. And studies have found that stress levels in infants uh, rise as soon as they're separated from their mother and those have long-term damages to the brain. And yet society is constantly pushing towards separation of mother and child at an earlier and earlier age. Child guidance reads, opportunities of inestimable worth, interests infinitely precious, are committed to every, excuse me, every mother. And they took all the different jobs that she did. And they put a salary on each one. Let's just say moms you are very underpaid. <laughs> But you know that research didn't look at something that doesn't even have a value. And that is the spiritual impact. She just after concluded that studio is a studio new. A luat în considerare ceva ce nici nu se poate estima, și anume impactul spiritual. The eternal results of the mother. We're told that the mother who trains her children for Christ is as truly working for God as the minister in the prophet. Is this the spirit prophetic că mama care își crește copilul pentru Hristos? Este lucrează pentru Dumnezeu la fel de mult sau la fel de adevărat ca și cel care a primit de la mama. We're told that the king on his throne has no higher work than has a mother. Se spune de sora că împăratul pe tronul lui nu are o lucrare mai importantă decât lucrarea mamei. You know, do you desire a life work, mothers? Do you desire a life work? Um, uh, a goal in life. A goal in You have one in the raising of your children. Do you want to have an influence in the world? We're told that the influence of the mother is the greatest in the world. Do you want to be a power for good in this world? We're told that the work of a mother is the greatest power for good in the world. Do you aspire to missionary service, maybe? We're told that God will record the name of the faithful mother right beside the greatest of missionaries. Do you wish you could maybe you still be an angel? Wouldn't that be easier than being a mother? 
să te vrei să mergi așa și mai ușor, să fiți uh, un înger decât o mamă? Well, we're told that an angel could not ask for a higher calling than the mother. And the mother spune că un înger n-ar putea să ceară o poziție mai înaltă decât poziția unei mamă. There's nothing of greater worth. Nu există ceva de valoare mai mare. And we, we read that when the judgment will set, when the books are opened, when the well done of the great judge is pronounced, and the crown of glory is placed on the victor's heads, many will take their crowns and raise them in the sight of the universe and point to their mothers and say, she made me all I am through the grace of God. Eternal life, the result of a mother's work. If we can't give up a few earthly possessions for to to help us accomplish this work, then what is truly our highest priority? So those were five ways in which we can strengthen the witness of our families. Acestea au fost cinci metode prin care ne putem întări mărturia familiei noastre pentru adevăr. But there's one more. Este este încă una. We need to pray. Trebuie să ne rugăm. We need to pray not just for our children. Trebuie să ne rugăm nu doar pentru copii noștri. But pray that the Lord will give us strength to obey His will. Dar să ne rugăm ca Domnul să ia putere să ascultăm de voia sa. There's a wonderful illustration from the pages of history. Este o ilustrație minunată de pe pagina istoriei. You know, when, when someone would go on a long journey, they didn't get in their vehicle and drive. They didn't. They didn't. No. Când cineva mergea într-o călătorie lungă, nu se urcau în mașină și pe cauza lor. And they didn't have these high-powered torches and flashlights that we have now that cast a light way into the distance. Și nici nu aveau aceste lumini și lanterne pe care le avem astăzi să facă No, they had to walk along the path with an oil lamp. And this lamp just cast a small little glow around it. She adjusts the lamp, but a mica, a mica to illuminate the way. And it was just far enough to see the step in front. She got. So the man, the traveler, he would hold it down near his feet. And he could get all worried about the road ahead. He couldn't see the road ahead. He could just see the step in front of him. He says, oh, I have light for that step. I can take this a good step. I can take that. So he takes that step. And what just happened? Now he has light for another step. And he takes that step. And on comes another step. And step by step, walking in the light that he has at the moment. He can complete his journey. And that's the way the Lord works with us. Maybe this evening, one of the five points we looked at, we thought, oh, that, that's difficult. I don't know how I'll be able to do that. But the Lord doesn't ask us to know how we're going to accomplish something. He says, no, just take the step that I've given you life for.
There was a man who wanted to change the world one time. Now that's a big project. So he thought about it for a long time. One morning he jumped out of bed. Today's the day, he said. I can't keep waiting. I better start today. I'm going to change the world. So he got up and out. He said, where do I start? The world's a big place. So he looked at it and he goes, well, I guess I can start with my country. I'm already here. <laughs> No, once I change my country, then I'll change the rest of the world. So he looked at the map of his country a little more. So he said, wow, even my country, that's a good place. Where do I start? So he looked at the map of his country a little more. So he looked at the map of his country a little more. So he looked at the map of his country Look at the map of the state a little longer. So we got the map of the state. Now where do I start here? I guess I'll start with my city, he said. Well, look at the rest of the city. Now, once I get my city changed, I'll, I'll make it bigger and I'll change the world. So he's looking at the map of the city and he says, "Which street do I start on?" So he's looking at the map of the city and he says, "Which street do I start on?" So he's looking at the map of the city and he says, "Which street do I start on?" I always thought, I guess I'll start with my own street. Then he thought, well, which family do I start with on my street? Ah, that family down at the end, yeah, they really need some work. Ah, the other end, they need some help too. I don't know where to start, he said. And then he said, oh, my family needs some work. Maybe I should start trying to change my own family. But then he thought, <laughs> do I start with my wife? Do I start with my son or my daughter? He said, well, maybe I need to start with myself. The man found the key to changing the world. He realized that is, if he worked on changing himself, if he worked on taking the step in the light that the Lord had given, then he could leave his family and change his family. And then his city and his, his street and his country and state the country and the world. We need to change the world. And we need to finish the work so that we don't have to stay in this world any longer. To accomplish that, we'll take that well-ordered, well-disciplined family. That one, the family that tells more on behalf of Christianity than all the servants that can be preached. Let us focus on our most important Christian field. Let's pray. Father in heaven, what a work you've given us to reach the world. We thank you though that you've given us the tools to do it. I pray Lord for the families here represented that you give them the strength to make their witness what it should be. We know that that witness can either be negative or Make it good, Lord. We thank you for your presence this evening. 
We ask him, go with us now and bring us together again tomorrow. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.